who succeeds Governor Obaseke as the governor of Edo said that also and that raised the scenes actively began especially when INEC has come out to say this is the way to go. Well, the Edo State governorship election in September this year uh, is really looking up. The state deputy governor, Mr. Philip Shaibu, is asking the leadership of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to allow him to fly the party's flag. The PDP wants to win the election in September. The Edo State uh, deputy governor who was at the PDP headquarters to submit his expression of interest form appeals to the PDP leadership not to hand over the future of the party to those they describe as businessmen. And according to him, some PDP governorship aspirants in the state have already begun buying over some members ahead of the next party primaries next month. Comrade Philip Shahabu is my guest tonight on the program. He joins us live here in Abuja. So thank you so much indeed, thank you Your Excellency, much. for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs> You are a fighter. <laughs> comrade at heart. Yes, comrade at heart. <laughs> so it's good to see you. Thank you. You've submitted your form now. Yeah. So the race has effectively begun. Yeah. How tough is it going to be? Uh, well, uh, politics is always tough. Uh, uh, this one would not be different. But the, the only thing that is different in this one is that we are about 11 of us. And uh, we have not gotten a leader that can meet with us and prone the number down. So we are all going to the race. That is the difference. I mean, I thought uh, there, were, there were those who say that maybe you were going to the APC. Were they talking to you? Ah, uh, They also said I was going to SDP, YPP, APGA, ADC. So they are all associating me with all the parties. That means I'll be the candidate for all parties, including APC. Maybe if you don't get a ticket of the PDP, you might use other platforms. Maybe that is what it's looking like. There's no maybe there. I am going to have, uh, get the p a ticket of PDP. Mm. I'm very confident what about that. What gives you that confidence? And because I'm the candidate to beat. And you can see it from all the attacks. Mm. They're really attacking you, isn't it? Yeah. Where are these you see, attacks coming you see, from? You see, it's only a tree that has ripe fruit that they throw stone at. So mm. I'm that tree that has ripe fruit. And that's why they're throwing stone at me. If you are not ripe, if, if you pass a tree by, a mango tree, there's no ripe mango on it. Nobody threw stone to it to mm. plug it. You so it's it. only a tree that has ripe mangoes. So I'm that tree that has ripe mangoes. So that's why everybody trees. You call yourself homeboy? 100% homeboy. What does that mean? That means I'm one, of the, I'm one, one aspirant that the people can see, the people can feel, the people can touch. And I'm one uh, aspirant that understand what the people need. And I know all that uh, they are all yearning to have. I've lived with them, understand them, I understand their thinking, and I know what they want. You see, I'm not going to be a governor that will throw things at the people that they don't need. I live with them, I understand them, and I know what they need. So in terms of need assessment, I know what every zone uh, needs for survival and for the growth of our state and for poverty to be made history in our state. Uh, it, it looks to me that this race, this race is beyond what we can see on the surface. There are a lot of uh, background conversations, there are a lot of uh, horse trading and politicking that is going on that the average person is not seeing. And those who stay up at night, uh, like you politicians who, who have nocturnal meetings, <laughs> uh, understand the intricacies. But, I mean, do you have um, a plan B? Yeah, my plan B is to politics, win the primaries, and win the, uh, the general election. You know the reason why I asked that question? Yeah. And you know yourself that the governor is the leader of the party. Yeah. And usually they dictate the manner in which things flow yeah. in the party. Yeah. In fact, the governors are usually the ones who dictate who, be, who gets the ticket of the party. And as far as the eye can see, it doesn't look like you and Mr. Obaseki are on the same page. I don't think he wants you to run. Yeah, I can bet you that Mr. Baseki, the governor of Edo State, my boss and my senior brother will support me because uh, uh, he has said it at the secretariat when we had our stakeholders meeting, that whoever wins, he will support. And, uh, and the whoever that will win, 
is nobody else than Philip Shaibo. Mm -hmm. So well, when I win, he yeah. will support me. Well, Deputy Governor, what we are hearing is that he's, uh, he's supporting us way. Uh, he has denied supporting us way, even when we know he's supporting him. And, but that really is not an issue for me. And because um, I am an own boy, I understand the politics of Edo State. And as somebody that is experienced, and that, that is what is one of my selling points, experienced politician, experience in management of resources, experience as far as governance in public and private sector is concerned. I have an edge over him. He is coming with private sector experience. I'm coming with both private sector experience and public sector experience. Mm -hmm. I'm able to understand where private sector sense stop and where public sector sense starts. So I'm able to combine both. And I can see that this whole technocrat thing, some of these technocrats need to go for lessons on that to, to learn public administration. It's completely different from private uh, administration. So experience that I'm bringing on board is not just uh, political experience from where I started till now. I'm also bringing value to governance. And I will be able to administratively govern for the betterment of our people. So I'm bringing on board character. So you have the, uh, the pol political uh, experience above Asue, for example, and that's a matter slow for you. Yeah, I don't think we should make Asue an issue. Because, because uh, if the governor is backing Asue, that's a, a big issue. No, 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 it's not an issue for me. Uh, because uh, why is it not an issue for me? I am an Edo candidate by the grace of God. But the governor I'm owns not... the structure of the party. No, 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 no. PDP owns the structure of the, of, the, of the state. PDP. It's PDP that owns the structure of PDP in Edo State, not the governor. But the you, governor, you is, do not have the delegates. The, the delegate election will be on the 3rd of uh, February. Nobody has the delegate now. We are going to be having the election on the 3rd of uh, February. So, so it's after the 3rd of February that we'll know who owns the delegates. The, 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 the political structure yeah. uh, leading up to a governorship election is simply, uh, it's look complex, but it's simply, it's simplified by the manner in which it goes. Uh, it's like a tree. Yeah. So uh, the, the stem of, the, uh, of it is those who will hold onto it. And whatever you see as the leave, are the delegates, the people who are the supporters of the party that you see are the, like the flowers. But those who own the stem, which is a structure of the, the base of the party, yeah. they control things. Yeah, and I'm, I, I mean, you. as you know, I mean, which is, is something that is uh, uh, out there, that the governor, Governor Basaki, owns the stem, the structure of the party as the leader of the party. If he supports someone, it looks like that is how the party might go. Yeah, let me tell you something. Actually, on the last election, for instance, I am from Edo North Senatorial District. And uh, if you check the statistics of the results, Philip Shaibu from Edo North got more than 50% of the vote, total votes for PDP in the last presidential election. So if you want to talk about structure now, that means Philip Shaibu had the structure of PDP. Because if we can deliver 55%, of the total vote of PDP in the last presidential election from a donut where I come from. And the governor's senatorial district can only produce 13%. So it then means, if, you, if I go by your analysis, that means I own the structure of this party in the state from my own, from that calculation. But I don't think that is the real issue because this is an intra-party activity. And that's why I want to limit myself because I know I'm going to win, and I don't want the governor to change his mind. How do you After win? winning, he will not, he will not say, big, from what I have said, he will not support it. And so since he has made that pronouncement that whoever wins, he will support, I am sure winning. So I know the governor. That is why I'm confident that the governor what will support What strategy do you hope to use in winning? Yeah, like I always say, revolutionary statics are not disclosed in public. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, give us an understanding, what do you bring to the table? Yeah. You've been uh, a deputy governor for eight years, but beyond that, can the people of Edo State, can PDP, for example, trust you with the ticket, the flag of the party to fly it? PDP is trusting me with the ticket, and I can assure you of that. And like... 
what I'm bringing on the table is experience. She said, Edo State cannot afford to have another experiment. And why I say so that we need to develop our state. And you need a man like me that, under, that already understand the dynamics of the Edo politics and the dynamics of Edo economy and how we can quickly grow our economy. I am coming in from day one, Shehu, from the podium where I will be I mean, I'll be inaugurated. I am going to be announcing my secretary to the state government and, and, and swear in, in on that same podium. And in my, in my uh, 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 speech, I'm going to be announcing my commissioners with their portfolio. And the first assignment the SSG will be doing on that same podium after announcing is to sign already type list and send to the House of Assembly. In one week, I will swear in my commissioner. And I'm going to be nominating my commissioner. If you are going to be my commissioner for works, I'm writing Shehu Akimbeloye, commissioner for works, sending to the House of Assembly for them to screen you as commissioner of work designate. And why, is, why am I doing that? As I speak to you, Shehu, I already have my plans. I'm going to be constructing a rail line in Edo State, both intercity and the one connecting and the state line, which will connect three senatorial districts. I'm going to be building bridges. And these bridges I'm going to build, not just physical bridges alone, political bridges. But the physical bridges are the ones that will help to grow our economy. Don't forget Edo, when you check the location of Edo in the map, that itself an incentive for economic growth. And that means ease of movement of goods and services is, 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 is paramount. I'm going to be constructing, for instance, a bridge from Todd to uh, uh, Ramat Park. If you are going to Abo, it stops you after Bender uh, Buries. If you are going to a donut, you have no business with Ramat Park. It takes you out of there. I'm going to be constructing bridge in opposite junction, for instance. Why? Because we need to stop that consistent uh, accident in opposite junction, just like in Jetu Junction, where Dangote and Boa trucks are always, it's always a problem in that, in, in that axis. And so we have to grow our economy to the extent that Edo will now be a uh, food basket of the nation, just like Benue is. Before you get into that, you said you're breeding bridges. Yeah. You, you're, you're breeding, uh, building, going to be building uh, rail lines. Yeah. I mean, Lagos, for example, we know how many years it yeah. took uh, yeah. Lagos to be able to build one. These are heavy infrastructure projects that would be demanding a lot of funding. Where do you hope to get this funding within, for example, a four-year term in office? For instance, the orange line, which we connect to Poboha and Oredo and uh, Igo, for instance, we take a minimum of three and a half years to build. And we are going to be raising, the, we are going to raise this money, not just through our internally generated fund. We are going to get private, so that way the private sense will be activated. We are going to get private in, uh, uh, firm to come and build for us. And we are going to be concessioning this facility. They will build, people will pay for it. Even the bridges we are going to build and some roads, especially from the old road, we are going to toll them. And so we are going to get the private, when we say we have private sector experience, the private sector experience that will be activating is getting private sector to bring their money. Not getting private, not government putting private, uh, public money in private sector business. That is not the kind of private sector economy I'm going to drive. I'm going to drive a private sector economy where the money that is, yeah, so there are some of these fair and some of the uh, uh, multinational. There are money that are there that you can assess and you can get these people to even invest in your state, run it concessionary, and within 10 but, but, but you years, they get money. Money. We're it? definitely going to borrow some money for infrastructural development, not for recurrent expenditure. Have you done the math? Have you done the figures? Yeah, how much this will cost, how much uh, revenue it can generate, and the impact on the average citizen because you do not want to do infrastructure that will overburden the, the people of your state. Yeah, the road infrastructure will open up the economy. For instance, from uh, Oredo till I get to Jetu, the federal road, all the businesses on the sidelines, they are all folded up. 
when we build those rail lines and build uh, these routes, because I'm going to collaborate with the federal government, build these routes, those, the economy... I, I see that you have, you've drawn a map which uh, you probably yes. now want to speak to. Yes, the economy uh, of the area will open. For instance, this, uh, this uh, uh, report, I, I, I set up a committee. This is the first of the report and, uh, uh, that I have gotten. This one was just given to me day first today by the team I set up. This one is the bridge uh, from Todd to Ramat Park. This is... Are they costing? I, I, I'm, uh, what it, uh, the costing is on now. Okay. This is just the first feasibility uh, document that they just released. And I just released it yesterday. The costing is already on. The costing of the rail line is already on. And the areas where we are going to get money is already being uh, uh, sorted. And while we are doing this, and while we are doing all this, is uh, the, from my experience in government. When you get there, the first one year in government is difficult if you don't start now to do anything. Because at those states, don't forget to say have midterm election. So you only have 12 months after you're swearing in to actually work. Because the next year, you are, in, you are already preparing for federal elections. And as those elections are going, you are preparing for state election. So you need somebody that already, already understand that uh, system to be able to come in and hit the ground running. And that is why people ask me, you want to get your, commission, uh, your, your executive council set up in one week? Yeah, because I need to set it up to be able to advertise this uh, 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 project. Yeah. In my first one read this in office, this project should we should hit ground running. Let me pose this to you, and this might not be in the area of road construction or infrastructure uh, development, but this is actually going to be in uh, cultural development because Edo State has one of the richest in the world in terms of culture, heritage. And the those who, I mean, I don't know if you have had opportunity to, to visit any of the, 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 uh, the royal houses in the UK, uh, whether Windsor Castle or where, wherever, they've monetized and they've turned those, cent uh, those places into tourist attraction, tourist centers. And there are those who are uh, who hear and have little understanding of the Benin Kingdom. Um, and they will be wondering what it looks like, what they have, they, they, they're just thinking in their head. And there are those who think that tourism will thrive in Benin, in Edo State, for example, are you thinking in that direction? Yeah, our moats are, are, are heritage and we can make money from those moats. Our Igu Street is one of those areas where we can really make money, turn the economy around. Our Igwe Festival is one of them. We have a lot of this festival. Our Day just took place recently. Uzari Day, uh, Every Day is there. Ososo, Igara, there are a lot of uh, 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 festivals that we can convert and uh, uh, boost our tourism. Is it part of your plan? It's part of the plan, of course. I'm going to be governing with the traditional institution because it, for me to be able to drive uh, 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 economic growth and also secure a new state, I cannot do it without partnership with the traditional institution because the first point of call is in your, in, in your small house, there is a traditional ruler that is in charge of that domain. There's a villager that is in charge of that domain. So we need to go back to what it used to be. And well, that is the only yeah. way we can all just, we can secure our state and also be able to carry the people. Because what is critical is to get the buy-in of citizens into your plan. And when you get the buy-in of citizens, Nigerian people are very good followers. When they understand your policy and they can read and trust what you are telling them. The people of Edo State and I listening to you will say, you have hand in hand worked with Gov Governor Godwin Obaseki. And when you're now asking that you want to run the state uh, as the chief executive, the question they will be asking you, what, uh, how can they trust you with the resources of the state and the destiny of the people of that state, considering what the Godwin Obaseki-led administration has delivered? Yeah, we both deliver on those uh, on the mandate that we 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 are presently running that will be ending by November. Would you say that's been successful. 
yet to be successful, of course, based on the priorities, the promises made, and that those who are groaning and asking questions about the promises that have not been fulfilled, and you're getting out of office. Yeah, we've been successful in some fields, and government is continuous, and that is why I want to continue uh, in, in that trajectory. But in those areas, they have failed woefully. No, well, no, how would you describe it? Uh, yeah, what we, would you be telling we, the people? We, you hand in hand with your principal, of course, raising your hand, you were promising the people, and now eight years is getting out, and you have not been able to deliver on those, and you're asking them to trust you again. How would they be able to do that? Yeah, Sheo, I listened to, I think, Aswell Gudaro denying the governor recently, and I will not deny the governor. The governor is my boss and also... Uh, my senior brother. I call him my boss and senior brother. And he is governor and deputy, and we are work together. You understand? Whereas Aswa is denying him. Aswa is his business partner. You understand? So all of us, Aswa and I, we are close to the governor, and we are governor's uh, uh, friends also. So for me, I won't deny him. He remains my boss and my senior brother. But you and accept we are, the failure too. And we are, of course, of but course, I'm part, I'm part of this government. And why am I contesting? I'm contesting to, I've seen the gaps, I've seen the gaps from 2016 to where we are today. For instance, when you check our economic outlook, we've done some progress. In, uh, when we came up on board 2016, we, our economic outlook was between 1.2 to 2 trillion naira. Today it's about 2.6 trillion naira. And when you look at the economic growth rate. When we came on board in 2016, it was about 3.1, 3.2. But today, we've, there's significant increase to about 5.6%. Uh, you understand? And when you check our GDP per capita, mm. from what it was about 1,200 1, to 1,003 in 2016, we've been able to grow the economy to the level that we now have about 2,038 uh, GDP per capita. So when you look at the economic aspect of it, we've been able to grow right. it. But what yeah. I'm bringing on board is that those statistics yeah. should reflect on the faces of our people. We and that to, is what I'm bringing yeah, on We need board. to wrap up now quickly. You complained in when you're collecting the form that some people are already buying yeah. the delegates. Who are these people? Yeah, it's not just buying delegates. Um, they, uh, they, some of them just uh, they give... 200 people, senior special assistants. As I'm speaking to you now, when you check your, your online thing, there are about 200 of them that will just be nasty about Philip Shaibu. Just be nasty. That's, they are paid with taxpayers' money to do that. You understand? So they encode some elders, not the young people. The young people are with me. Some elders are also in that pay line. And that's why even when they cannot win their own right. unit, they are, they are adopting people on right. their own without party structure. We need to close now, and I have just 10 seconds to ask this yeah. question. Considering the relationship between you and Godwin Obaseki that went sour, can politically the people trust you? Yeah, the people can trust me. My supporter is organic. It's not procured. And I'm... Look at the, my forms. My forms were bought by my former colleagues contribution from people, both the expression of interest form and the, uh, the nomination form. And I've been running this campaign based on right. organic support by, from the people, especially the young ones. They are all there. They are all there on my side at all times. Right. And I also want to let you know, our diaspora, the Boston group, the European group, the New York group, they are also contributing we to making to... sure that this campaign works well, because they want to come back. We are to totally out of time, Deputy Governor. Thank you so much indeed. Time is not on our side. Deputy Governor of Edo State and Governorship Aspirant of the PDP, Comrade Philip Shaibu. Thank you so much indeed thank for your time. Thank you, Sean, for having me. Bye -bye.